so the the touch of knowledge you know when when we get the knowledge for example uh, this 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 shloka is not known uh, known to us yet but once we read it and we uh, understand it that means like this is uh, earlier it is a kind of ignorance but we we now we can understand like that right and uh, where it is saying i offer my respectful obeisances unto him uh, we are we are praying or we are bowing down our head and uh, you know, we are taking the pranam and giving the like uh, giving the pranam to our guru that is the move where we are now and the next one this shri chaitanya mano bhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamakyam tadapi swapadantika yeah. anyone can read this rashmi you want to read yeah. it is also there in the book when we see the rupa goswami prabhupada who has established within this material world The mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya gave me shelter when I was lotus feet. Yeah. So here it is. It's told like you know, Sri Rupa Goswami is one of the you know, guru, uh, Sri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, um, in this you know Krishna consciousness movement, uh, one of the prominent gurus. Uh, basically the goswami means who is the who is having the full control of the uh, senses you know he can control his sense if he want to eat he will be eat if he don't want he he cannot i mean he can control his tongue or even if he want to see anything he can or he don't want to see anything and he can stop seeing it i mean uh, basically he will have the full control of the, the senses basically how it happens with us for example if we are going we went to one of the shopping mall where we see a food court we see a lot of food is there and then uh, automatically we feel that okay why don't we eat this you know, sometimes we may eat you know, something which is not uh, healthy for us but it it tastes well and then we think that okay it's okay let's let it let's eat it even for example if we are feeling cold i mean we we are suffering with the cold but we should not eat ice creams but our tongue says okay let's let's eat it's it's I mean, if you are in the beginning stage of the cold thing that. that means like we don't have the control on our senses but the goswamis who are uh, having full control of the senses so he is the uh, rupa goswami is one of the guru and who has established within this uh, material world the mission to fulfill the desire of lord chaitanya so lord chaitanya is uh, one of the incarnation of shri krishna which is happened in the uh, in the kali yuga 500 years ago okay just just remember lord chaitanya here and then we will uh, discuss more in in coming classes or whenever we we get uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's name okay give me shelter under his lotus feet so uh, what he is expecting what we are expecting here we are expecting the shelter under the lotus feet of lord chaitanya that is indirectly under the lotus feet of shri krishna that is one thing okay so i will uh, take these two only as a meaning and the stuff uh, rest i will read it and will continue uh, further with a brief introduction of bhagavad gita uh, to have you know, to have the interest in sort of you know, going into each and every uh, shloka and so on okay let's i read this and after that we'll see vande ham shri guru shri yuta padakamalam shri guru vaishnavamscha shri rupam sagra jatam sahagana ragunadan vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखान विदांश हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमो सुदे दिस प्रेयर इज इट्स इट्स प्रेइंग फॉर कृष्णा एंड नेक्स्ट वन तप्त कांचन गौरांगी 
राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय दिस इज फॉर राजा राजा ओके एंड a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm and give a uh, lot of knowledge and so that the, the people can get out of the ignorance that is the mood of the uh, vaishnava so to them we are uh, trying to you know, give obeisances to them here you can see i wear respectable obeisances and to all the vaishnava devotees of the next shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Pranda. Here just I will tell you, uh, but we, we will discuss this also in further discussion. Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. And uh, Nityananda. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the incarnation of Krishna. And Nityananda is the incarnation of Balarama. Might be you already know Krishna and Balarama. I think right. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah. So this these two Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu uh, came into this uh, material existence and by five five hundred years ago, where these uh, two uh, incarnations started giving the Harinama Sankirtana movement for this uh, Kali Yuga. Just the uh, reason behind this. Uh, I, I will tell you the rest and then I will tell you the reason behind why this Harinama Sankirtana. So, Sri Advaita Gadadhara, Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Pranda. Actually, here one and two Nityananda and they heard Advaita Acharya is one of the other two and Gadadhara Pandit is one of the other two and Sri Vasa is also one of the two. Three, I mean, here Advaita Acharya, Gadadhar Pandit, and Sri Vasa. And including these two, it's a five people. It's it's called as Panchatattva. Okay. So to have a uh, kind of sorry. I I floating the control six. You are still able to see that screen? All right. It is stuck. Uh, some quantile one team is open. Lost somewhere. You are able to see that this no introduction. I am not able to see. Is anybody else able to see? No, the quantum one thing is visible. Okay, let me be share. Stop share. Okay, share it. Okay. So, who else joined? Uh, yeah. Pala joined. And is Xiaomi? Who is that? Xiaomi M2103. It's Krishna, right? Yeah. It's, it's coming differently. 
So uh, you, now you can see, right? Shri Krishna, Shri yeah. Prabhu Nityananda, yeah. Shri Yatra. Yeah, Shri Advaita Gadadra, Shri Vasadi Gaurav. So uh, this is called as Panchatattva. I will show you Panchatattva. Because we just once. Panchatattva. So these are Panchatattva. Nitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Mahaprabhu, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Acharya, Gadavya Pandit, and Shri Vasa. So these are the five incarnations. Five, uh, every, every, as I said, at least for now you can remember, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Mahaprabhu is the incarnations of Krishna and Palava in the Kali Yuga. Okay, and uh, the, the last one, I think you can repeat. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <clears throat> so why this this name came into the existence, actually? Uh, I was telling this in the morning to the students. Yeah. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Mahaprabhu came to this Kaliva uh, and they they incarnated here to spread the this Mahaprabhu to all the people. That is the re the reason behind it is uh, we we have four yugas in, in the in the time like you know calculating the time like the scriptures and so on. Uh, Any one of you know what is yugas? Names of Yuga. No. Shabal, I think you should know. You would have come across. Yes, uh, can I say? Yeah, yeah Javed. I yes. remember one. Krita Yuga, Preta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and last and final, Kali Yuga. Exactly. Yeah. So, Krita Yuga. Uh, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Hmm? That's good, Ajavi. Thanks. So, here you can see first Yuga is Kruta Yuga, which is also called as Satya Yuga. Uh, in Satya Yuga, basically, what people used to do, uh, actually, it's, it's a kind of, kind of process. Uh, we, we took what uh, as a human uh, in the form of human, and uh, there is a big difference between. Animals and human. Uh, I was telling this in the, in the previous discussion. So there is the Ahara Mitra Maya Maitina Mitra. Sava Nyamita Pashubed Narana. So Dharma Dharma is the, the Vishesha, actually, that, that uh, Shloka says. What, what Ahara is put? Bhaya is, uh, you know, uh, he, he will be uh, threatening, threatening by something. Uh, I mean, animals and humans both will have that threatening feet. And uh, Bhaya and Nidra, Nidra is sleeping. And Maituna is producing the children. Uh, even these four things are common for animals and also common for human beings. What is the different, main difference between these four animals and the human being is dharma. Huh? Mm -hmm. We can understand, we can analyze which is correct and which is wrong. If we are not following the dharma, and I mean, we are not understanding and we are not analyzing and we are doing it according to our wish. We don't consider the other people or other animals or other nature, nature uh, uh, process. I mean, you, you won't respect anything else other than your needs. That, that means you are not following them. In that case, there is no big difference between the animal and, you know, human being. So, 
that 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 kind of differentiation is there for human and uh, the, the once he get this knowledge what is his intention he needs to move to the next level what is that next level it's not about the material uh, well, gaining the money or gaining the fame it, it is a temporary part actually because it, it 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 will exist for some time and after that it you know it goes off because uh, the, the, this physical body is having four things birth death old age and disease birth is common for everyone death is common for everyone old age is common for everyone and disease is also common for everyone everyone uh, goes through all these four stages that means like this physical body is going to uh, die one fine day that might be 50 years or 60 years it used to be 100 years in the past uh, you know like that that means there is something is happening with this physical body uh, something is there inside this body and which left this body and that is the reason we are calling it as death so to identify to understand what exactly happening with that soul which is there inside this physical body uh, that that is that concept is called in the spiritual knowledge and spiritual uh, you know this thing as moksha as you are already grown and you can understand these concepts and that is the reason i'm put, putting some you know uh, advanced information here because this uh, why we got into this mantra is also relatively uh, there is a link between this this concept so uh, in the satya yoga what the people used to do they used to meditate hmm, on god and so that they will control their senses and they will reach to the god okay and uh, after that in the treta yoga what they used to do they used to perform yajna by the you already have seen many temples will do yajna by uh, pouring the ghee and putting a lot of uh, fragrance items and many items into that and by uh, chanting many mantras uh, reciting many mantras and so that those uh, whatever uh, uh, poured into the yajna kuta will be given to the gods and they will give us whatever you want and, and so on so by that way they wanted to reach to the god and they they try to understand the god in the treta yuga and after that we have um, dwapara yuga dwapara yuga what people used to do because the, the level of consciousness and the the dharma is also decreasing and the, the capacity of the 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 human being is decreasing that is the reason dwapara yuga the people used to uh, they cannot concentrate more you know doing the meditation and they cannot sit for longer years then the, what they did they started doing the uh, deity worship you know in satya yuga the the lifetime is uh, 10000 years in treta yuga uh, uh, sorry uh, in satya yuga it is 1 lakh years in treta yuga it is 10000 years and in dwapara yuga it is uh, thousand years you know that lifetime is also reducing so it is not uh, it, they don't have enough time to meditate or you know do yajna and yaga so they started worshiping the god in the form of deities so, so that is the reason we have a lot of temples spread across india across the world because we we are going to the temples and we are we we need to have a form and then only we can focus like that so in dwapara yuga they used to meditate on the Uh, this thing and then uh, gradually once the dwapara yuga ends and this kali yuga came into the picture okay uh, in kali yuga uh, it is very difficult to do, do the meditation because you, you cannot even sit for half an hour without moving you know, we we don't have that capacity to concentrate on something uh, or uh basically when you are meditating or doing the yoga you will be concentrating on the breath you know, breath in and breath out or sometimes some uh, yoga teacher says that you focus on your nose tip of your nose sit uh, straight and without you know moving your physical body it's it's obviously very difficult for the people who are in kali yuga and uh, coming to the yajna uh, nowadays in kali yuga uh, people go and perform the yajna you 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 won't get the pure items for it for, for sure everything is kalti i mean everything is you know 
some are other way it is uh, uh, it is you know uh, it, it it has some bad thing in, inside it you know? and you don't get the quality items to do the agnya performance and at the same time you, even the people doesn't have the the capacity to recite all the mantras in proper way with the sound vibrations so that is one of the reason it is very difficult for the kali yuga people to do the yagna and uh, coming to the deity worship also it is it is also very difficult it's not that much easy to do the deity worship where the deities you you feel that the god is there okay you do perform the puja and all these things so that is also very difficult so for kali yuga uh, that is one of the reason you cannot do all these three things and it will be easy for you to do the recitation of one mantra so where uh, this hari krishna maha mantra came into the picture and uh, the the lord chetan mahaprabhu and uh, ityan the prabhu uh, given and spread this hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram hari hari maha mantra so that it, it will be very easy you know i'm sitting in a chair and i can chant i can recite and try to meditate on lord or if you are traveling somewhere and you can do japa and you can focus on lord and so that your consciousness will be purified and you will be thinking about the god so that is one of the reason this japa will be there it's for it is common for many many you know uh, people do this one or the other way they will do japa for one of the taking one of the mantra because uh, mantra means mana uh, one way how can it be we we are doing the continuous uh, repetition that that is called as mantra so uh, yeah this is what uh, the four yugas and how we ended up uh, or we are in the in the phase of doing the chanting of hari krishna maha mantra okay is that clear until now or do you have any questions until this point uh, yeah shiva can you tell me like when did ramayana ramayana happened in which yuga so ramayana happened in treta yuga previous to dwapara okay and krishna ji was there in dwapara yuga yes krishna is there in dwapara yuga okay okay uh, yeah that is the question or do you have any extension of this question no no that was only yeah so uh, basically in satya yuga you can see uh, <clears throat> what we can say the rakshasas demons demons used to be there in the other planets and uh, in treta yuga the demons used to be in the same planet okay you understand uh, earlier might be you you hear the story of you know uh, varaha avatara where uh, varaha bring the earth to the to its position where hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha were the two rakshasas and hiranyaksha was taken away that planet to other you know water waters and then um, kurma avatar bring that back to the this that means like the, the demons used to be in the different planets in the satya yuga and in treta yuga it, it into the it came into the same planet that means like ravana asura was a rakshasa uh, demon he was there in the same earth planet system right and uh, in dwapara yuga the, the uh, demons came into the same family okay and in kali yuga the demon is within us our mind in the form of mind so because it it it, it uh, creates a lot of new sense in our our brains all the time okay yeah, you asked the question that is a nice nice <laughs> mentioned this but yeah treta yuga ravana asura was there and uh, to kill the ravana asura ram shri ram chandra murti came into uh, this earth and also he killed many other um, demons the uh, demons and uh, yeah that's what and there ram avatar okay 
Uh, yeah, and in this uh, Kalyuga, like uh, Kalki will take birth. Yes. And it he will start one new Satyuga. Yes, once once Kalki appears and he will kill all the the demoniac people, and he reestablished the Satyuga. So that will happen now. Now we are, uh, as per the scriptures, uh, we are in the you know five thousand one hundred and twenty five. Uh, starting phase of Kali Yuga. So the Kali Yuga is 4 lakh 30,000. At the end of the Kali Yuga, Kali will appear. Right? Okay. Javed, are you following? Oh, yes. I'm just listening. Can yeah. you briefly tell me about this Sambala? Which one? Sambala, the born place of the Kalki. Yeah, that is mentioned as Shambhala. Uh, but at least uh, I am not sure or I haven't uh, read much about this uh, Shambhala place where it is because if you search in Google and they will be giving a lot of information on this Shambhala place. But uh, in the scriptures that will be mentioned somewhere in the Bhagavatam, uh, I haven't read that yet. Still need to read that. Great. Okay. That's great. Any other questions until now? No other. So yeah, these these uh, prayers we will be doing when we start reading the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, and uh, yeah, before going into more details, and just I wanted to give you um, uh, information and uh, the information on the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, and then uh, we'll conclude for today because it will not take much uh, thought if you are interested. I can okay to have the discussions if you have any other questions, but I will give you what exactly the Srimad Bhagavad Gita is all about 10 to 15 minutes more. Okay, actually, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, uh, if you see your books uh, where it is written as Bhagavad Gita as it is in English, and if you see it in Hindi, Yadavit, and in, in Telugu, Yadavadam, means like it is as it is. The reason why it is uh, written as, as it is because most of the uh, writers who who uh, taken out the books or printed books or written books on Bhagavad Gita, everyone introduced their own thoughts. You know, okay, for example, if there is any shloka, uh, and then they start uh, explaining that it in, in a different level according to their understanding. You know? And uh, not exactly what Krishna told to Arjuna. Or you know, sometimes uh, the same Bhagavad Gita book read by few people, they say that the God doesn't have any form; he's formless, he's only energy. That they say. But in in, in the Bhagavad Gita itself, uh, uh, Krishna says about his form and his, his uh, uh, rupa and his leelas and in the twelfth uh, canto. I think it's it's clearly mentioned what is the you know. Uh, full form of Krishna. Arjuna saw that form and you know he asked he, he uh, begs Krishna please come back to normal uh, position, normal uh, this thing so that I can see you. Otherwise it's very, becoming very difficult for me to see you. That that kind of uh, uh, rupa uh, the God is having. Okay. So that's what like a uh, few people think that okay God doesn't have any form. They, they read, they, they read the uh, same Bhagavad Gita stokas, but they come to a conclusion in a different way. Like that, there are many versions in this you know, world, in this universe. Uh, many people have their own perception. But when it comes to the as it is, why do we need to read this Bhagavad Gita as it is? Why not the other Bhagavad Gita? Because we have to, first before, like when we wanted to read Bhagavad Gita, we have to understand whether this book came from the right uh, path 
can I write Guru Parampara? Okay. So that Guru Parampara is also mentioned in the book. Uh, you can, anywhere I can show you the example. So here you see the the discipline succession. Okay, from where this knowledge came to whom, and is that rightly transferred and the, the guru parampara is right up that we have to cross check. If someone says my Bhagavad Gita is um, perfect and having the right uh, information, we have to ask the question: What is your guru parampara? Here you can see the guru parampara and guru structure starts. You know, so Krishna is the uh, uh, personality of Godhead. He given this knowledge to Brahma. And from Brahma to Narada and Narada to Vyasa. Vyasa written this Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, and all other uh, Upanishads, uh, uh, Puranas, Upanishads, and so on. From there, it came down Madhva, Madhvanabha, Vihari, like that. And it, it came to you know, different uh, district succession. Here you can see, uh, which is kind of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also there. Uh, and Rupa Goswami, Raghunatha, and these are in recent uh, 500 years back, uh, Guru Parampara system and so on. Where you, you can see A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada is the uh, Prabhupada, who is the founder Acharya of huh? Iskan. <coughs> okay, he's the Guru of uh, this 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 quick succession, which we are reading the books from him. I mean, when he is writing these books, what he did instead of putting his own thoughts and all these things, he referred to the books which are written by the another guru. And he written that clear description of translation of the Bhagavad Gita. Keshi means Abhicharan. Actually, his name is Abhichar. Bhakti Vedanta is the, uh, the, 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 the name is given as he got full understanding of the scriptures. Swami Prabhupada. Prabhupada is, uh, you know, he's the, the servant of the Krishna, so to speak. Pada means footsteps. Okay. So, AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada book we are reading. His Guru Maharaj is the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. So, that is the reason. Why do we, why do we, or why we are reading this book? Because it's it's, it's prominent and uh, having nice uh, gurus, guru parampara is there, and that is the reason we are reading this book. <clears throat> okay, and uh, when we say uh, this Sri Bhagavad Gita, yeah, the meaning of the Sri Bhagavad Gita is Sri means Lakshmi Devi, or sometimes you know Radharani. Uh, Radharani is also kind of you know. Lakshmi Devi, both are incarnations. And uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita means Bhagavan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What is the meaning of Bhagavan? I will tell. And uh, Gita is the song. We, we generally in Sanskrit, Gita means it's a song. The song sung by Krishna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra uh, to Arjun. Okay. And in the first chapter, when we are reading, we are reading why he chose an Arjuna, why it is in the Kurukshetra battlefield, and everything will be discussed. So, uh, so Sri is Ratharani, and Mat, Sri Mat Bhagavad Gita, that Mat is blessings of the Ratharani, is in the form of Shakti, energy, and Bhagavan is the Bhagavad, and Gita is the song. Okay, and uh, Bhagavad Gita is having. 700 shlokas, okay, and uh, 574 shlokas are uh, given by Sri Krishna, spoken by Sri Krishna, and 84 shlokas by Arjuna, and 41 by Sanjaya, and one shloka by Dhrutarashtra, okay, 
that one sloka which starts with the first first chapter of the first sloka is by Dhritarashtra. Okay, 574 of Krishna, 84 of Arjuna, 41 of Sanjaya, and one is of Dhritarashtra. Four, it's seven of them. So, um, how these scriptures came into the existence? You know, uh, now we have, uh, you know, you can you can pay some money and you can get a printed book which is having a nice images and pictures and a nice text, whatever the size you want, you can adjust and print. But in the olden days, it's we don't have any, you know, printers. The reason is um, everything is uh, told and remembered. That is called as Shruti and Shruti. You know, scriptures are learned by the other gurus, you know, everyone in the Guru Parampara, how it used to be, you know, something I'm telling. Uh, something Guru is telling, and I am learning from him. And I am not noting down anywhere. I am not, you know, capturing it. Uh, it's somewhere. Just I am remember everything in my uh, mind. Okay, that means like Shruti uh, in the Sanskrit it is called as Shruti. Uh, Shruti is the sound vibration which is coming from the mouth of the Guru. So like that, uh, the, the Guru Parampara they used to remember all the, the scriptures. Ali Purana, Siti Hasans, four Vedas, Rukh Veda, Ezra Veda, Sama Veda, Prada Veda, Salta Vedas. They used to remember. But by the time we enter into the Kali Yuga, we are not in a situation where we can remember. If I tell, if someone tells to me something, I remember for a few days and after that I will forget. Or for example, in Kali Yuga, the people are having the the forgetfulness, a lot of forgetfulness. We don't know what happened in recent one month back. We remember only few things, not all. On particular day, particular time, what happened, we don't know. We don't remember all the things. That is our memory level. So that is the reason we, we get into a situation we wanted to have some printed books. That is the reason we have these printed books in our hand and we started reading it. But earlier, it used to be Smriti and Sruti. Okay. Uh, uh, as I said, it is told by Krishna and remembered by Brahma, and like that, it came into the other Guru Parampara system. Uh, five, six hundred years back, this, the, that uh, these scriptures are in the same uh, Shruti Shruti, and gradually the, the Guru Parampara, the Acharyas, Goswamis, they try to uh, make it, you know, hard copy. They used to write everything, you know, whatever they have in their minds. They were putting on the papers because the people are not there to listen and understand and remember. The, the capacity is not there anymore in the Kali Yuga people. Then they started writing. It took it, it will take a lot of time for them. It, it used to take a lot of time for them to uh, make a one set of Bhagavata and give it to some. So like that, it, they took a lot of time to get this into the, in the form of printing. And this is the, the, the story of the scriptures, why, how it came to us uh, in the Sruti and Sruti. And uh, I will I will end up with a uh, few more, couple of more things. Bhagavan uh, is actually having the six opulences in full. Those six opulences we can discuss later, but I'm just going to name it wealth, beauty, fame, energy, knowledge, and renunciation. Is All these six are in full. Basically, we came from the guard, and that is the reason we might have wealth, but very limited. We might have beauty, that is also very limited. And we might have fame, also very limited. And we might have energy, uh, that is also limited for us. And knowledge and renunciation is same. But God will have full energy, full wealth, full beauty, full fame. Everything is full. If it is, if he is not having anything, I mean, if he is having less, and that means he is not a god. So that is the reason Bhagavan is the, the person who is having everything with him. Okay. So uh, that is one thing. And uh, why do we need to read Bhagavad Gita? Is one question I, I ask myself and I will tell you. For example, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, reading of Bhagavad Gita is very much important because, for example, if I buy uh, a washing machine or a mobile phone, what we will get? 
in the box. Or if you buy any electronic goods item, you will get something along with that. Shubhangi, you following? Javit, yes. Whenever, whenever we buy something, what uh, we have a phone box, right? What, what we will get yes. inside the box? As accessories which are required for that uh, electronic gadget. Yeah. No. User like manual. Like user manual. Yeah. yeah. User manual also there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So user manual, what we'll do, we, we have to read and use it. Might be phones, may be regularly using that is the reason we might not use much. For example, if we have a washing machine we bought and we have a user manual where we wanted to, you know, uh, to clean the tub. Maybe we don't know the steps. Then we take the manual and we read it how to clean the tub with what program I can set and so that the uh, washing machine can be cleaned. Right. So uh, similar to the that, uh, for example, if, if that washing machine is working and then you can read the manual and you can start cleaning it or using it. But if you switch on the washing machine, but it is not switching on hmm, or it is giving a lot of noise and then there is no point of reading the user manual. What you will do, you will bring, uh, you will ask uh, one repairer to come and make it repair. Right. Similar to that, the Bhagavad Gita is a user manual for this human body I and mean, the physical body. How to use this physical body in this life according to the nature laws and according to the nature expectation and so that we live peaceful life. Okay, so that is the, the, the usage of this Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is a user manual and, uh, you know, uh, Few people think that why should I read Bhagavad Gita now? It's, it's, I'm I'm still young. Or few people think I'm a school going student. What what to do with Bhagavad Gita? What should I learn from Bhagavad Gita? It's not needed for me now. It's all you know devotional. You know, we we have to read the scriptures at the age you know 50, 50, 60s. Once you are done with all your you know. Uh, accomplishments in whatever you wanted to do in your life you do it and then you start reading the Bhagavad Gita. That is the kind of you know uh, impressions we have in our kids. But user manual, if you start reading it as similar to you know when you switch on the washing machine you are not able to even run the washing machine, what is the use of reading the user manual? And similar to that if your physical body is not supporting to do the activities in this physical life and then you start reading Bhagavad Gita or any other scriptures and you feel that, okay, you should have done this uh, according to the nature principles, you should have done this. And then you feel that, oh, I already done this and, you know, I'm not in a situation where I can re, uh, revoke my mistakes. So that is the kind of situation we will be if you start reading it at the age of 60 or 70 or uh, in the later stages. So what is the suggested age to start reading it, you know? It's very much important for everyone uh, who born in a you know human family, human thing as a human being. And uh, for example, if they start pronouncing some words and sentences, for example, if they are, they are able to recite, uh, follow the pronunciation, and we start uh, teaching them the Bhagavad Gita. The reason is they might be understand. Uh, they don't understand the essence of the Bhagavad Gita, but they come uh, come in contact with Bhagavad Gita. They start understanding. Uh, I mean, learning the shlokas in the beginning stages, and later on, they understand the the real meaning of Bhagavad Gita shlokas, and then they start implementing those in their life, and they will get succeeded in the material world and also in the spiritual thing, spiritual thing. So that is the reason. Uh, there is no age restrictions to read Bhagavad Gita. You can start reading Bhagavad Gita at any point of time and we can suggest to everyone to read it so that you, you will understand this uh, whole uh, creation and uh, you start
start living according to those principles and you will be very happy living. You know, uh, if you think, at least in my experience, in my knowledge, uh, in 80s or 90s, uh, uh, we used to living in the villages. We were very happy whether we have light or we don't have lights. You know, street lights now came into the existence, but earlier in the villages, even though they don't have street lights, but we used to uh, roam around even in the nights. Uh, we, we were living peacefully, but when we came into the cities, how much peacefully we are sleeping. Uh, until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, we are watching movies and we are uh, wearing the spectacles and where we got any sight. Or we are getting the back pains and uh, by sitting longer hours and hours and hours. Or some are the other way around. We are thinking that we are enjoying, but at the same time, we are suffering with many uh, things which came into our life without our, you know, uh, our intention. Because we, we adopted some different uh, lifestyle into our lives that is uh, the scripture says how simple you live and how uh, and that level of happiness you will have you know uh, so it's not about you should not have the aspirations but you have to have the aspirations but at the same time you have to balance between the between your life and your other things along with your you know uh, understanding of the scriptures and knowledge to gain and to understand who am I in the other question. Okay. So uh, that is one of the reasons I uh, basically the guru says you start reading Bhagavad Gita from the beginning. Uh, you can start anytime. And uh, also there are some, uh, sometimes the people think that, okay, we should not have Bhagavad Gita in our houses. A few people think in that way. Or we have to read Bhagavad Gita. Only someone dies in your family. Uh, and in in, uh, in Telangana region or in, in Telugu people, sometimes, uh, you know, when one person dies and at, at their home, uh, they used to play uh, Bhagavad Gita. And if we, we hear Bhagavad Gita, that means, okay, someone died. Well, it's an auspicious thing. That is the kind of impression we got into our lives. Uh, that is due to our lifestyles. But there is no uh, bad thing in reading the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, it's also what you ate, uh, where you are, uh, what is your physical condition. Ignore all these things and just wash your hands and legs when you roam around outside and just open the book and start reading it. Maybe in the beginning it is difficult to read and understand, but I think gradually Sir, your voice is not coming. Okay. Now or from long time? Yeah, now it's fine. Now it's fine? No. Until what you hear? What is the last sentence you you heard clearly? And you were telling like we should live simple life and yeah uh, we should read Bhagavad Gita every day. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so simple life in the sense like whatever we are doing and uh, the that lifestyle add we should not you know sacrifice anything. Just we add Bhagavad Gita into our lives and you continue doing what you are doing. Because Krishna says to Arjuna, what he says, do your duty. Uh, fight what you are doing. And I mean, you fight for the, uh, the kingdom. So you should not give up. Uh, the similar way, what we are doing, what we are uh, doing for our life. And yes, we have to do. But what do we have to do? We have to bring the dharma into our lives and understand the Bhagavad Gita and scriptures and God and so that we, we know what is our destination, where we are heading. Otherwise, we end up with a simple and smaller destination. Okay. So what I'm saying also, you know, when wherever you roam or whatever you ate, uh, just ignore that. Come to home or room or wherever you are 
just wash your legs and wash your hands take the book and start reading it okay and so that you will you know purification or the understanding will will happen with reading only mm -hmm. and then where we can have this form every certain forum every saturday we can have the discussions questions and answers everything and so that more questions will be clarified and uh, all the 700 shlokas based on my experience and you know i started reading this in the uh, lockdown period only during 2020 to until now and we started reading it every day morning in the 6 30 to 7 30 uh, call will be there in the telugu we used to read and it is continuing now also i am not joining that much actually because of other services but uh, where we read Bhagavad Gita and we asked n number of questions, you know, why Krishna, why Bhagavad Gita, why, what is happening with Arjuna, uh, what is this battlefield, everything, every small and big questions we asked and try to understand uh, what is happening. All 700 slokas will give answers to each and every question which we have in our mind, you know. It looks like only 700 one time you read, you will get some understanding, and second time you read, and again you get new understanding. Like that, it's it's again, you know, complete cycles. You cannot, I cannot say that okay, I read some Bhagavad Gita completely. I'm hundred percent perfect. No, every time you read, you will get more understanding. That is the, the level of Bhagavad Gita. Okay, here, here I will pass uh, because uh, I think we started at three fifteen or. 20 something like that it's 415 um, yeah i thought of giving this information for today and then we gradually get into the more details Hare Krishna. so if you have any questions please no questions You are feeling sleepy? No, no. No. <laughs> Interesting. No. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Rashmi, I think she already slept and you know, taking a nap. Okay, it's class in. <laughs> Is that the case, Rashmi? Yeah, it looks like. I know, Shiva. <laughs> okay. Uh, if no questions, and then we can conclude. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When we conclude what we say, we say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You can unmute and yourself and you can say. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Nice. And Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. He is the, the founder of Sharia Facebook, but he has given a lot of Okay.